Hello and welcome to the second in my masterclass series of videos for Audioscope. Now in the previous video we took a look at mix mode which uses a 2D top-down graph of all the tracks and their relative volume levels and panning as well as stereo width and we also took a look at uh, creating mixes so we can create up to three uh, mixes and then quickly switch between them to find which one we, we like the best. But in this video I want to focus first on snapshots which is a similar thing to mixes only different. Now while the mixes are a great way to snapshot the entire mix including the uh, EQ and compressor settings and everything uh, Snapshots simply allow us to fade, as you can see here, between uh, different uh, volume levels and stereo positions. And that is very, very useful because uh, we can uh, change the mix on the fly during a song and we'll get a smooth transition from one mix to another. Now, by default, live mix mode um, limits you to a 20 dB range. And uh, if you want to fade uh, your snapshots over a bigger uh, visual uh, range, then we can hit the options button in the mix bar and change that visual range so that we can have some drastic fades uh, from, uh, from low levels all the way up to uh, their current positions. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to stick to the 20 dB range and show you how to create some snapshots. Now, if you can see here, the three of the snapshots, one, two, and three, are already used. So I'm going to clear those snapshots out. And you do that by simply uh, long pressing on the button and picking clear snapshot. So assuming that the current um, track positions are where we want to start with the beginning of our song, uh, we can simply uh, long press on snapshot one and uh, add that um, those positions to snapshot one now this menu that appears allows us to pick a glide time and we can pick either a glide time in seconds or beats or make it instantaneous now since this is my intro snapshot i've just applied a time a glide time of one second now also if we long press on that we can now set a name for that so i'm going to set intro as the name of that first snapshot now we may want to change the position um, and levels of uh, these tracks as we transition into the chorus. So I'm going to just rearrange a few of these items, uh, change the stereo position and move a couple of them forward in the mix. Of course you would be listening to this in real time and finding out what sounds right but uh, bear with me. Uh, now. Assuming this is the positions that we want for mix two, we long press mix two. And because this is going to happen during the song, I'm going to give this a four beats glide time. And then as it's good practice, I'm going to actually name this snapshot as um, chorus to indicate that this is the positions we want everything when we move to the chorus. Now for the third snapshot, I'm going to drop everything back in the mix and uh, bring a lead forward and uh, this is going to be for my middle eight so what i'm going to do i'm going to bring up the mix bar and use these little arrows in the far right of the mix bar to lower everything by a few db and once i've done that i can bring up the snapshot bar and save that snapshot uh, in this case what we'll go for um we'll go for another four beats and not forgetting uh, to rename this as middle eight. Uh, we have our third snapshot. Now, <laughs> I've forgotten to, uh, I was, uh, the, the whole intention was to move the lead forward in the mix and drop everything back. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna overwrite that mix three by long pressing it and picking a uh, overwrite mix and uh, giving it a, a, a fade time of four beats again. What's happened though is, because I've overwritten the mix, it's it's lost its name. So let's just give it that name again, middle eight. And now we have our three mixes saved. And if I move the snapshots bar 
slightly out the way and we uh, hit the intro snapshot everything moves to its intro position when I hit snapshot 2 it transitions those elements over 4 beats I think we're running at 120 beats per minute at the minute and finally pressing uh, snapshot 3 transitions to the middle 8 where the lead is pronounced and everything is dropped back Right, so once you have a set of snapshots, uh, yes, you can press the buttons in real time, but um, you can actually use your DAW to trigger these snapshots. And it's the same is true with the mixes, although I don't know why you'd really want to switch between mixes uh, unless you were just doing it remotely for the sake of it. Um, but if we look at the exposed AU parameters, you'll see that all the snapshots are listed there. And if I was to pick snapshot one and make that visible inside um, AUM, you can see the little snapshot button next to the uh, audioscope icon. And when I press that, it transitions to snapshot one. So those are also accessible via MIDI. If you if you look at the manual, we uh, tell you what CC values to use for those transitions. So let's now turn our attention to the other uh, live mix tools, which are all available to us at the bottom of the screen. Each one of those five buttons is mutually exclusive, and the one that's currently selected is highlighted with a white border. Now it's important to notice that the strings icon or track is selected here and that's reflected in this control menu. Whichever track we have active is the one that we are controlling. So if I change track to bass drum, you'll see that the, the this uh, menu reflects that. And I want you to also notice the little asterisk next, next to the bass drum which indicates that this window we've got open is the window for that bass drum. Now if we reselect the strings track and click the EQ button at the bottom here, you can see that we the graph changes to one that's reflective of EQ and we can just touch and drag uh, on the screen to change the EQ of this track. And I want you to notice the horizontal white line that appears within the EQ button indicating that EQ is set for that track. Now if we change track, you'll notice that EQ button is no longer selected, it's no longer highlighted. And uh, that's because there is no EQ on that bass track. When we flick back to the strings track, you can see the EQ and we can go in there and modify it. Now you can always double tap on any column to reset that column. And if we have many uh, column set we can just triple tap with three fingers to reset everything and the EQ button returns to its off state now if we have an EQ set and you want to hear what it's like without the EQ we can long press the EQ button and it turns it off but all the sliders and everything remain in their their current state and we can always at any time long press that EQ button to turn the EQ back on and that's true of all these uh, particular uh, tools at the bottom there. So let's skip along to the shelf filters and these are very useful for either cutting or boosting low frequencies or cutting and boosting high frequencies. So if we want to engage the low shelf filter we simply drag from the left uh, out until we uh, get the vertical position that we require and uh, then we can just simply slide up and down to uh, cut and boost anything up to 24 db now this is typically used for removing low end below 50 hertz but it also might be used on something like strings to make sure that it doesn't interfere with the bass frequencies and if we drag left in the right hand side of that screen you can see we can set a frequency range uh, for the uh, upper shelf filter and we can cut and boost that again by 24 db now this is typically used for stripping some of the high frequency ranges out of maybe a bass drum or just bass guitar or something like that it shouldn't exist within that frequency range now as with the eq we can simply double tap in the high frequency area to reset that back to zero db and the same with the low frequency area and if we 
triple tap with three fingers it resets the whole thing and again it will be turned off uh, on the button at the bottom of the screen now while I realize that some of you may not like this color scheme it's good for the videos because it stands out but if you long press the menu button we can switch between uh, various color schemes and uh, I'm gonna pick another one I'll pick this uh, gl uh, classy gold and black just to uh, continue this video with so let's move on to the peak filter tool which can be used to either boost or cut uh, specific target frequencies but it's mainly used for cutting kind of unwanted frequencies that are spoiling the mix so we add a filter by uh, tapping on the screen in the lower half of the screen and either dragging up or down to engage a filter and we can pinch to zoom to change the uh, bandwidth of that filter and get a really precise needle like precision with uh, the bandwidth going all the way down to uh, 32. Now we can add uh, a second uh, peak filter just by tapping uh, again on the bottom of half of the graph and dragging up or down uh, and as you can hear here um, boosting the mid frequencies uh, using using this peak filter and again we can add a third filter we can have up to three of these uh, peak filters active at, at any one time on any channel and again just double tap to remove the filter or triple tap to remove everything and reset to defaults so the last out of the five live tools is the compressor and uh, the compressor is quite unique in that it is nearly all visual. Now most of the compressor controls are adjusted by tapping and, uh, and dragging on the screen such as the attack, release, threshold, makeup gain and knee. Uh, but we do have a number of elements here such as the compressor ratio, the 5 millisecond look ahead and the uh, sidechain there are extra items that appear only when the compressor is selected so the compressor is enabled once the threshold leaves 0 db and uh, one useful thing is to enable the VU meters which not only show you the output level but also show you the gain reduction now I can optionally set a sidechain on here and uh, we can use this to monitor the gain reduction on the sidechain. So in this case the volume level of the bass drum is used to control the output level of the strings. Now just like the other tools we can uh, double tap to reset individual elements or uh, triple tap to uh, reset everything. Now when the output level exceeds the threshold we get gain reduction which is at the rate of the uh, compressor ratio and the knee just helps smooth that out. And finally the makeup gain which can be used to uh, boost the output level after applying the compression. Now one thing that we can use the compressor for is a limiter. Uh, if you're going to do that, uh, set it at round about minus 3 to minus 6 dB and uh, set the ratio all the way up at 32. Now it's also very important that any instance of audioscope you add is after the effects and if you can, post fader. Otherwise, the compressor can't work as a limiter if there are effects after audioscope. So that concludes our look at the snapshots and live tools. Uh, in the next video, we're going to look at comparing uh, graphs and graphing modes and how to compare those to a reference track. But for now, don't forget to thumb up the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time.